Hello, hello, hello. Uh, hope you're all well. Hope you're uh, all good. It's another time for another Instagram Live here on Sky Sports F1 and I'm going to have a guest with me very, very shortly. As soon as I see that he's joined this Instagram Live, I'll pull him up and put your questions to him. Hi to all of you, Jack and Dawn, Joanne, all here really early. Nice to see. Thank you very much for joining. Right, let's have a look and see if our guest is online. There he is. Very nice. That's what I to see. Let's Wait for him to join in with this conversation and uh, we'll get cracking with your questions. Ange, Arcadia, all these questions. George, so many questions coming in for you. Hi, how are you? Very good, how are you? Good, thank you. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Um, I'm going to have to start, first of all, you're with family, aren't you? So in family, lots of uh, family members around you. Are you all staying sane and you're all still talking to each other? <laughs> Um, pretty much, pretty much. We've not had that many arguments as yet, so no, it's been nice, you know, playing a bit of cards most evenings and, um, yeah, I said pre in previous interviews, never spent so much time with my family as I have done recently, probably for five years or so, I haven't spent this much time with them. So, um, you know, times like this makes you appreciate more important things in life. You know, Formula One is my life, but it makes you realise that life itself is more important than anything what card games have you been playing because i've been doing that with my family but we've been playing against each other online and it got really heated last night <laughs> oh yeah i know it does it gets proper heated isn't it so i don't know the official name we call it trumps uh the game i googled it recently and it's like one of the most popular card games like out there of of all time you have to predict before your round how many Games oh, I know what you mean. I know win. what you mean. Um, yeah. And then you've got trump cards, which are certain suits, uh, depending on which round it is. So I need to find the official name because trumps doesn't sound uh, that great, <laughs> does it, really? <laughs> I know the game you mean because we've played it, but I can't remember what we call it either. But I know the one you mean. It's really yeah. good. It's really it is. Good. And I enjoy it. I enjoy it. There's a bit of thinking goes on, so uh, that's good. Awesome. Listen, it's been a bit of a busy day in F1. Let's get this story out of the way first. Has it? Lots of, um, <laughs> <laughs> lots of movements going on. First of all, what have you made of it all? I think, I think it's great, to be honest. I think, uh, you know, mixing things up, I think it's great for the, span, uh, for the fans. It's great for the media. I think they, they love that. It's obviously great for, you know, the, the young guns of F1, you know, seeing Carlos joining Ferrari, you know, you've now got, you know, Ferrari, two youngsters, Red Bull, two youngsters, you've got Lando there in McLaren. Um, so, so I think that's great. But I think, yeah, Daniel going to McLaren is going to be good. It's going to be great for Lando. I think, you know, he's going to relish that challenge. You know, you know, having somebody, a really strong teammate next to you, I think Lando's in a bit of a win-win a situation there. So that's, that's great for him. Um, so it's exciting, I think, for the for the future of the sport. Is it weird sitting at home watching this all unfold? Did you know much about it in advance, either of the moves? I may have known a little bit about it in advance. <laughs> um, no, it, it took me by surprise a little bit to start with, but it, it all makes sense. You know, the likes of Ferrari, you've got to start looking to the future um, with Charles and Carlos. You know, that could potentially be their lineup for five, six, seven years to come. And um, I think in any organisation, that stability is what is what people need. So, you know, two mega, mega good drivers side by side. And likewise with with Lando, Lando and, and Danny, you know, Danny, again, how old is Daniel? 30, 28, 20, 29, yeah, 30? Yeah, I think he's had his 30th. Yeah. So, he, you know, he's got, you know, still a number of years in him and, um, you know, both him and Lando could be at McLaren again for four, five, six years to come as well. So I think it all makes sense when you, you think of it from that side of things. And like I said, I think it's just exciting for, for the sport. We've had um, so many questions about you. So just put to bed where you're at, your deal with Williams and everything else. Because honestly, I've got so many people asking you, oh, George, what does that mean for you? So if you just want to put that all to bed now. That would help me rip this whole page of questions up. <laughs> literally all asking you the same thing. Uh, I mean, you know, the fact is I'm I'm contracted to, to Williams at the moment. Um, you know, it's no secret I'm I'm also contracted to Mercedes. You know, they 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 effectively own me, they're my, my managers. Um so yeah, at the moment I'm I'm fully focused on, on the job ahead and uh, 
plenty of speculation, but you know, we don't like to comment on speculation, so you know, time will tell. We want, we like you to comment on speculation. I know you don't, the team no. don't, but we like you to. <laughs> no, no, like like I said, you know, what will happen in the future, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. So uh, obviously, big shakeups at, at the front of the grid, you know, obviously changes the, the dynamic a lot. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of weeks and months to see who fills the the rest of the spots um, on the grid. It's interesting, isn't it? Because when I think of Carlos's career and you think of him losing out, going to Red Bull, so he left Toro Rosso and then going to Renault and that one working out and going to McLaren, the way things have turned around for him, it just shows you, you've just got to keep in there and keep fighting in Formula One, haven't you? Absolutely. You know, we're, we're all youngsters. We all want to have that successful career and races and victories right here in the moment. But... Um, you know, even like Nico Rosberg, I don't know how old he was before he won his first race and how many years he had in F1. But if you're doing the job and you're performing, we'll all get our chance. And, um, you know, that's all I can do at the moment. You know, obviously, seeing my mates up there in championship, potential championship winning cars is, uh, you know, is something I'm a little bit jealous of, obviously, because I want to be up there trying to fight as well. But nevertheless, I know... As long as I keep on performing and I keep doing my job to the best of my ability, that opportunity will come, whether it's uh, next year, two years, five years, ten years, um, it should come. Yeah, your time will come. You, your Williams contract runs to the end of 2021, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, I'll leave it there. We'll move on. I've just got to take a cushion away. I've got these really low chairs here to sit on, and I've realised I'm sitting now really high with that. Right, let's move on then. Questions from, um, loads of fan questions coming in for you as well. Uh, this one's from Adam, the e-racing. He's talking about the e-racing. How much fun has that been? Um, and also, I remember you said something about Charles's personality coming out. I mean, we've seen him being hilarious on there. It's been great fun to watch. But he messages you in the middle of the night or sets up WhatsApp groups in the middle <laughs> of the night and stuff. I mean... We're all mates. Um, you know, me, Charles and Alex have, you know, been in a, in a lot of contact recently. Uh, and Charles is always coming out with wacky ideas of things he wants to do. I think we've got the the e-racing side of things, which has been getting very competitive recently um, with the official F1 stuff, which has been great. And obviously for all of us, we need that competition. And even for me, it was winning at the weekend was a, was a real buzz, to be honest. Um, you know, something I've definitely missed even though it was behind the computer but then we've got the the fun side of things where we're messing around on all sorts you know there's truck Traps, racing lawnmowers. And, uh, <laughs> lawnmowers and all of this and um that's that's been fun it's been something i've enjoyed and you know building a stronger bond with, with the boys and um you know if the fans are enjoying it and liking it that's that's a bonus as well do you think you'll be able to carry that through when we go back to racing or do you think the, the competitiveness will maybe squash it a little bit I hope so. I hope so. I think, you know, generally our our time, we're so busy. We're, we're absolutely flat out. When we do go back racing again, um, it's going to be incredibly hectic, more more than ever. More than ever, sorry. So I hope we can, uh, but, but who knows? We'll, we'll see. We'll do our best. And I think we're all surprised of the um, response we, we've got from all of this and how, how well it's gone down. So it's probably something between us we'll, we'll need to think about and continue to entertain. But the fact is we're all F1 lovers and we try and entertain on the track anyway. Yeah, it does feel like you've reached a new audience as well with it. It's been great, I think. Really, really great for all of you. Um, right. This is from Christy XNS Edits. I don't know. If you hadn't made it to Formula One, what would you have done? Um, well, when I was a kid, I used to play football alongside karting. And when I was seven years old, I was quite competitive at football. I was, um, I was up front, I was scoring the odd goal here and there. Um, and that was like a bit of a thrill as well. And at the time, I was only uh, practicing go-karts because I couldn't race. And even though I loved racing at the time, I didn't have that, you know, the thrill of scoring a goal because I was only just practicing and practicing. Um, so it was actually a really tough decision sort of we sat down me and my dad and was like well, what do you want to do and I didn't know and there's a few tears um and then decided for racing and you know the rest is history as such but uh had it not been racing I don't think I'd have been a Cristiano Ronaldo but I might have been <laughs> football. 
um, Lando's joined us as well. Lando's watching and he's just put, oh my God, it's George. Oh. That, that Alex screaming your name is going to follow you around for the rest of your career. You realise that, don't you? I do, I do. No, I, do. I think it, it haunts him more than it haunts me. So every, <laughs> every time he sees me in his mirrors, or maybe when he's coming to lap me this year, and he sees he's coming up to me, he'll be screaming on the radio, George, get out yeah. of the way. Just, just hold him up for a little bit so we get that bit of audio. Yeah, I might do. I might <laughs> do. I'm not too sure how happy he'd be with that, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Lando, by the way, this is your opportunity to ask him anything you like. I'll put it to him for you if you want. Um, right, what else? What's the thing you miss most about F1? Other than driving, what's the thing you miss most? Other than our interviews, obviously. This is what I said to Carlos. So obviously, you miss that. <laughs> obviously, all the press. You know, yeah. I just love the press it's so much. favourite bit of the job. <laughs> it's um yeah I, I miss that more than the racing no um probably probably the fans to be honest when you i know for example at albert park when i walked in the paddock for the first time last year my first f1 race and you've got all the thousands of fans there and cheering your name asking for photos and autographs you know that was like that's that's a buzz and that, that's a you know a really surreal feeling uh, because at the end of the day, I'm just a, a normal bloke. Um, and just to see all that support for you is is incredible. So that's probably what I miss, miss the most. It's um, it's going to be weird at Silverstone, isn't it? If we have these races behind closed doors that they're planning, it's going to be really strange. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, Silverstone last year was an experience that I'll probably remember for, you know, the rest of my life. Just all of the support, um, you know, the the three of us had the three Brits mainly there for Lewis, but still me and Lando got a lot of it. And on the driver's parade before, stopping on the track and, you know, throwing caps and T-shirts out to the fans. And uh, in the fan zone appearance, when there's about 15,000 people or so and all cheering your name and everything, that was that was mega. So, um, I mean, that will be disappointing not seeing the fans there, but, you know... A race without fans is better than no race at all. So, um, and and that's what they would want as well. They they'd at least want to be watching from a TV. Yeah, give them something to watch at least. Um, this is from uh, I'm never going to get this right, so apologise in advance. Juliandra Maruna, what's the best advice you've ever received from another Formula One driver? Um, I can't think of any advice I've had from current F1 drivers. Um, Past ones? I'm really Johnny sure must that... have tried to give you some advice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just flat out and cut to one and straight into a lead, probably from Johnny. Yeah. Um, no, I had, I actually had a little bit of advice from Lewis about two years ago when I was racing F2. It was just in a bit of a debrief um, and I was struggling a little bit with something and I was just talking to some of the engineers and he just gave me a bit of advice from the driving side, mainly about, um, you know, the tyres and and how to try and get more out of them. And, um, you know, it's not something I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say here, but I'd say it's, that was a little thing that helped me find a little bit extra uh, what I was just missing at the start of my F2 career. So, and that's actually pushed me, pushed forward into F1 as well. And uh, so it's actually benefited me as well as I've moved into F1 and just that little piece of information is like triggers something in my mind to start thinking a lot about it and how I can get even more out of it. So um, I hope I can make him regret giving me that <laughs> advice one day. Yeah, it'd be good, it'd be good. Listen, Alex Albon's watching now and he said, best advice from me, add a coloured ribbon to your baggage strap so you don't lose your bag. You want to tell us about that? And what's he chatting about? He he chats some some stuff. This boy, he chats some stuff. Oh my word! I don't know what he's talking about. Um, yeah, well, yeah, they're all coming out, aren't they? They're all coming out to watch me today. What's, they're bored. What's this they're bored. They're sitting at home, not doing anything right now. No, it shows how interesting their lives is, isn't it? The best and thing they can be doing is watching me. <laughs> Landa says your chat sent him to sleep, I'm afraid. Let's move on. This is from Arkedia, who says, have you put on weight recently because there hasn't been a shirtless pick for a while? Oh, that is, um, that is, I mean, I've, I've put on about half a kilo. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really say that's putting on weight. That's good. Lots of people have put on a lot more in this lockdown. Yeah, I've been, I've been dedicated to the training, you know, I've been, uh, been loving it, been, been fully focused. So, None of that. Um, <laughs> well, when the time's right, we'll have to give the fans what they want again, won't we? Maybe. 
<laughs> We've created a monster here. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Alex will just be there cringing when he sees it again. It'll just be jealous. Don't worry about it. Right. Is. Um, Jobo71 thinks you look like Joe Lysett. Do you know who Joe Lysett is? The comedian and kind of consumer campaigner. No, I, if he's who I'm thinking of, blonde. Uh, no, his hair's a bit darker at the moment. It's, okay. um, I'm going to try, I'll try and find you a picture, shall I? I, I hope that's that a compliment, but... I, I'm, I'm going to... Is he good looking? <laughs> is he a good looking chap or not? Go on. <laughs> I'm going to sit on the fence on this one and show you a picture. Well, that's not good enough, is it? <laughs> I'm really sorry. Right, I'll ask you the next question. While you answer it, I'll find a picture for you. Caitlin says, what's the most useless talent that you have? I saw this question on Twitter <laughs> and I was hoping well, I thinking. didn't get asked because oh. I was thinking, like, where's some... Um... Yeah, you're not going to be happy. <laughs> I'm looking at these pictures. <laughs> uh, most useless talent. I'm, I'm really struggling to think here. I need to start... Bad juggling. Bad juggler. I'm actually pretty good at juggling now. I wouldn't say that's still. I wouldn't say it's a talent. Uh, no, can't can answer. Can you see it. that? Yeah, that's who I thought it was. What <laughs> I'm is, really sorry. Whoever they they need blocking. Whoever whoever <laughs> says that, so get them out of it. Um, right, Georgia, are you single? Do you fancy a date? <laughs> <laughs> I am single, but no, I don't do online dating. I'm. I'm sorry. It's not my not my vibe, you know. Um, Anna, what toppings do you put on your you home made, You made me look like a bad guy there with that reaction. What am I meant to say? Yes, to some random. Just slide into my DMs, Georgia. We'll have a chat. I'll get to know you. And if I like your personality, then I'll look at a picture. I know that's not true. <laughs> beauty is on the inside. It's not about the looks. It's all about the personality. Nailed it. Exactly. Nailed it. <laughs> Um, right, I wanted to ask you, have you been watching any good series lately? I started watching um, The Last Dance, the Michael Jordan Netflix documentary, and yeah, really enjoying it, really. Obviously, I knew who Michael Jordan was, and I knew that he was a legend, and I knew, obviously, the trainers and everything, but didn't know any of the backstory, and how much hard work, dedication, um, and what allegedly he, he was, and I think it's even for me, it's, you know, it's very inspiring to see how hard he pushed himself and everybody around him. And I think, you know, the true greats, the true leaders, do that. And I think in our sport, it's trying to translate that over to the team and trying to push the team and get the most out of the team because obviously he's got teammates. We've got engineers and aerodynamicists and blah de blah de blah, which you've got to get the most out of because. You know, but these top guys can't win races if they don't have the car behind them. But, um, yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it was inspirational for, for me and, and enjoying that. And also Afterlife. I've, I watched after, oh. Afterlife. I must have watched it in the space of all of it in 10 days. Really enjoyed that. It is, yeah, it's a fantastic series. My favourite scenes are him and the um, lady sitting on the bench who lost yeah. her husband. They just feel like they're ad lib, don't they? And they're just yeah, some conversations. So um, again, uh, I think it, it shows you, you know, there's more important things in life than, you know, you don't, you take these things for granted so often, I guess. And uh, something terrible like that happens, it makes you appreciate it. And same with, with what's going on in, in the world at the moment. I've just turned comments off for a minute because they were completely blocking out your face because you're too popular on this at the moment. So, um, yeah, there's another one. Though. I've been watching a series I was recommended called Lie to Me. Have you heard of it? I know, would I lie? No, this is called Lie to Me. <laughs> no, I don't. It's the same series. It's on, I think it's on Apple or one of those. And basically, um, it's reading facial expressions. Right. And I've always been into body language and reading people's body language and working stuff out from that. So like at testing, I watch drivers and engineers' body language more than I listen to their answers. Right. It's, I think it tells you more. And this series is fascinating. And I was watching it. And I was talking to someone about it yesterday. And I said, these drivers now are not going to get away with anything because I can now read micro expressions in their faces. Go on, man. So you've just had fear in your eyes for like a micro session, uh, second. There was a, like a moment of fear in your eyes, AC. I was terrified. It's a really good series. <laughs> it was a really good series. But if you watch it, it's fascinating. Mm. Like the, All the, right, read, can read, read into it. So yeah, it's called Lighting. Read me. Lie you what, sorry? I said, ask me a question and, and read, read me then. Or would um, you Okay. Uh, and 
Go on. Go on. Uh, who would you prefer to have as a teammate, Lando or Alex? Well, I don't really care. I, probably, probably Alex. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's the not, truth. I mean, that's the truth. That's the truth. Okay. Yeah. Um, which of the current grid do you not like? Well, if I tell you, you're not reading me. You just get answers. Out okay. Of okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll try to think. Oh well, I can ask you the really big one, but then I might get in trouble with your team. Well, you can. Well, whatever. <laughs> I'm yeah. really scared of your team, so I don't want to get. I don't want to upset them. They've been watching now. I know they are. You'll have Sophie about to message. Don't you dare ask him that. My other phone's already gone off once. I'm enduring it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking at it. Um, I tell you what. Let's let's ask you about these. So Hannah's asked, which one former track would you like to see on the calendar? We might get the opportunity to go to some of these this year. They're talking, aren't they, about the likes of Imola and stuff? What would really excite you? What track would really excite you? Um, probably Imola, to be honest. Um, raced there once in Formula Three and mega mega track. You know, proper classic. Uh, a lot of character. So it reminds me a bit of Zambort, to be honest. You know, if you make a mistake, you'll be off into the wall. Um, and I think we need a little bit more of that on the current grid. You know, we've got some amazing tracks on the grid, but we've also got some... So much stuff. Um, yeah. And I mean, obviously, safety is incredibly important, but we don't want to lose... Make it grass or make it stone. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And also from the track limits perspective, you don't want just tarmac everywhere and you can just do what you want. So Imola would be probably top of my list. Okay, I'm going to turn comments back on just for one second, see if we can get uh, a question from somebody who's watching right now. So if you're lucky, put a question through and let's see if we can get you on um, right now to George. So I'm let's see well. these. Um, can you, Daily oh. Aaron, can you take your shirt off? Well, I'm not going to ask you for, to do that. No. Um, contract ones again. See, this is... Uh, if you could do any other sport, we kind of covered that with football, didn't we? Mm -hmm. um, we've got a question, will you marry me from Hey It's Nobody Cares? <laughs> we sort of covered that before as well. Um, how much are you allowed to weigh, George? That's coming from Julia. Yeah, that's a good question. I am allowed to weigh uh, 75 kilos. So we've got a rule. Um, all the drivers have to weigh or at least below 80 kilos uh, with their kit. So that includes helmet, hand device, boots, suit, balaclava, everything, um, and their seat. So the seat weighs about a kilo and a half. Your kit weighs about four kilos. Um, so yeah, 74 and a half, 75. And I'm 73, which I don't think is too shabby for a six foot two <laughs> lanky bloke. Pretty so, good. Yeah. yeah. Doing all right. Still difficult. I still wouldn't mind the odd burger or chocolate bar or whatever here or there but you know got to look after that got to look after that bar haven't we <laughs> dear george has just messaged actually this was one i had down for you um you tweeted yesterday your powerpoint presentation when some of that news started coming out and it was very funny but people are saying did you actually send the powerpoint presentation in the end and where did you send it oh 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 now <laughs> i'm reading you <laughs> oh my word no, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> that was just for uh, for a giggle, wasn't it? So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll move on. Okay. Um, who's a better driver, you, Lando, or Alex? That's just come through as well. Well, we all race each other in F two in equal cars, and oh, um, I don't like to be cocky, but I won the championship. So you do. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, right, anybody have got any more questions before we round this off? Because I know I've taken more of your time. Who would be your ultimate teammate, past or present? Well done, Melon, I like that. Um, pick, pick one of each. Pitch one right now and one in the past. And, and what would you want from a teammate now? Would you want someone you get on with, someone you can learn from, someone you can have a really close battle with? What would be your top? I, I, I'd want the best because I believe in myself and I want to prove myself against the best. So current, I'd say Lewis past probably Schumacher awesome listen it's been great talking to you it's nice to see you guys because we're I mean everyone's missing their Formula One racing and we appreciate you coming on and uh chatting to us all so fans get to see you a bit more pleasure thank you look after yourself and we'll see yeah, you yeah likewise bye-bye take care thanks George bye. see ya there you go. That's today's Instagram Live with George Russell. Uh, big thanks to him for his time and to the team as well for letting him come on and we will have someone else for you very, very soon. Thanks for watching and look after yourselves. Bye.